Have you ever thought, there's got to be a better and simpler way to learn organizational strategies? 5 Minutes Learning has a global and diverse collection of case studies to help management students click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our upcoming and interesting case studies. Prepare to be mesmerized as we dive into the fascinating story of AT&T. It all began in late 19th century England with the brilliant inventor Alexander Graham Bell. AT&T's roots were tied to Bell's American Bell Telephone Company, which was established in 1885. The parent company was born from a merger between Western Union Telegraph and Bell Telephone Company. Western Union was a big player in telegraph operations, while Bell Telephone was the pioneer of telephones. Bell signed local contracts in the U.S. to expand telephone services, and to help with making phones, they acquired the major manufacturer, Western Electric. However, there was still a gap in their network when it came to long-distance lines. That's when AT&T stepped in to bridge the void and initiate expansion. AT&T's business strategy was on point. They wanted to make the most of their patents before they expired. At that time, telephone networks were just starting out, with little isolated networks scattered across the states. It was the perfect opportunity for AT&T to become the primary telecom company in the U.S. They responded to challenges like blizzards by aggressively expanding their underground network of landlines. The public saw the potential in AT&T and invested heavily in the company, making its stock one of the best-performing ones near the turn of the century. The main strength of AT&T was its lead in telephones, thanks to Alexander Graham Bell's innovation. This became the foundation for the Bell system, a monopoly that would last for decades. But it wasn't just about Bell's invention. It took a lot of business acumen and clever strategies to build AT&T into a respected and massive company. In 1894, AT&T's patents expired, and they faced the challenge of maintaining their competitive position. They restructured in 1899, purchased their parent company, and became AT&T Corp. The number of phones was skyrocketing, making telephone service a necessity across the country. To stay ahead, AT&T revamped its pricing and began acquiring small independent companies. However, this led to a drop in service quality and a tarnished reputation. In 1907, Theodore Vail, a former president, was brought back to steer the company in the right direction. AT&T issued discounted bonds to shareholders, which helped regain trust and improve their image. They also set up a research and development department, later known as Bell Labs, to innovate and get AT&T back on track. The new president, Vail, had a long-term vision for AT&T to become a nationwide network with a strong focus on service quality. He supported AT&T's monopolistic status, aiming to be the sole provider of phone services in the U.S. They aggressively acquired small phone companies and even provided credit facilities to struggling ones, later acquiring them as well. Back in 1913, something significant happened in the world of telecommunications that changed AT&T's course. In 1913, antitrust actions culminated in the Kingsbury Commitment, which forced AT&T to sell off many of the companies it had acquired recently. They even had to let go of their controlling interest in Western Union. The long-distance connections, which were once exclusive to AT&T, were now open to all operators. While it seemed like AT&T's reign as the main telecom company was over, they still held a strong grip on the market. Competitors struggled to snatch any share, and most of the telecom equipment had to be bought from AT&T or their Bell companies. During World War I, AT&T was nationalized for military purposes but was later reprivatized in 1919. 
This sparked explosive growth for the company, which operated as a supervised monopoly and expanding its bell system of companies. AT&T even ventured into space, launching its first satellite and assisting the U.S. government's space program. AT&T achieved some incredible milestones, such as the first coast-to-coast -coast telephone call in 1915 and the first transatlantic message delivered through AT&T's network. By the 1920s, AT&T had over 60% of the national phone users, with the remaining subscribers indirectly connected through independence. They even made a move into radio, signing contracts with companies like General Electric and establishing more than 15 radio stations in the United States. As the company continued to grow, it slashed rates to attract more customers, which paid off big time. By the 1930s, AT&T had weathered the Great Depression and emerged as the largest corporation in the world in terms of assets. AT&T was now a mammoth in the telecom industry, with over 80% of U.S. phone subscribers and 90% of long-distance line users under its umbrella. Their subsidiary, Western Electric, had control over two-thirds of telephone equipment. It was a regulated kind of monopoly, making it incredibly hard for any other players to enter the market. During World War II, AT&T gained valuable experience in military communication, which gave them an edge post-war. They started increasing rates as the market expanded and regulations eased up. This allowed AT&T to return to pre-war financial levels and strengthen their position in the Bell system. The demand for daily calls skyrocketed in the post-war years, especially among teens who were buying their own phones. As phones moved from shared lines to independent ones, more people gained access to services like weather announcements, generating additional income for AT&T. By the 1960s, AT&T had become a household name, solidifying its place as a telecommunications giant. Let's dive into AT&T's journey after the disintegration of the Bell system and how it transformed to become a major player in the wireless and internet market. After the Bell system broke up, AT&T had to rethink its strategy and reposition itself. In 1995, they split into three companies, the main AT&T Corporation, AT&T Wireless, and Bell Labs. The goal was to focus more on technological advancements in the telecom sector and maintain their position as a top telecom company in the United States. AT&T wasted no time and went on an acquisition spree. They acquired the cable television giant TCI in 1996 and local landline carriers, including Teleport Communications Group, to expand their reach and become a household name. With the newly appointed CEO, Michael Armstrong, AT&T shifted its focus to wireless communication and internet services. However, the following decade was a bit rocky with constant changes in their positioning. In a massive $60 billion deal, AT&T acquired another cable provider, Media One, gaining a strong market share in the cable TV industry. But this required significant investments to upgrade the cable system for speedy internet services. Eventually, they narrowed their focus to consumer services and businesses. The company made a series of acquisitions to establish a stronghold in the wireless market, aiming for a similar monopolistic structure as in previous decades, but this time in wireless communication and internet services. In 2005, AT&T was acquired by Southwestern Bell Corporation, SBC, one of the companies that emerged after the Bell Systems breakup. The following year, they acquired Bell South, and in 2007, they got their hands on Cellular One, a cellular company. They also acquired Wayport, a major internet hotspot provider, giving AT&T the largest number of hotspots in the U.S. As technology advanced rapidly, AT&T knew they had to keep up with the digital transformation. After the series of acquisitions, they had a lot of scattered data and unconsolidated systems, which caused inefficiencies. 
To tackle this, they significantly reduced ERP and legacy applications and utilized big data to make relevant changes and streamline their operations. Digitization not only reduced operating costs but also helped AT&T become the first 5G mobile provider in the U.S. in 2018. And in 2021, they took it a step further, becoming the first company to provide 5G in 12 cities, all thanks to their 5G innovation studio. AT&T's transformation is a testament to their determination to stay ahead in the fast-paced tech world, and we can't wait to see what they have in store for the future. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Do not forget to subscribe this YouTube channel for receiving updates about my upcoming case study videos.